Today on Core Conversations, we have Michael Hilton. Michael's from the UK and he's a life coach, a men's coach specifically. And we looked at the questions of where we are and where we're going and how we can be delusional in that process. We challenged the hustle, don't stop mindset. And we had a real good time just talking through things like fun and play and how important that is to our life path. Enjoy the conversation. No, um, I've been doing podcasts for years, but I kind of like the idea of doing it with someone. And we just hit off from there. And we done, we come up with the, the podcast. He actually come up with the name of it. He's the genius behind the name, Men on Form. Okay. And then we just, we just went on from there. And uh, we're on our second season now. We took a bit of a sabbatical last year um, just because we were busy in our lives. And we took a bit of sabbatical from it. But we picked it back up again this year. But we're kind of doing it in seasons now, Perfect. so which is cool. Yeah, which is cool. We're just coming up to the end of the second season. So, awesome. yeah. Yeah, man. So um, I'm a coach in the UK. Um, basically, kind of just focus on helping guys get their shit together, basically. Guys that are kind of struggling with um, mental health, like they're struggling with the stress, the anxiety and overwhelm. They're feeling lost in their lives. They're kind of stuck in this rut and, you know, they don't know how to get out of it. They can't not quite sure how they got into it. And they, they then they're kind of like, I'm stuck in this rut, but now I don't know how to get out of it. I've dug this hole, but I don't know how to stop. And, um, you know, it's just all through my own exp- – it's all come from my own journey and sharing my story and me being in a hole and being stuck in my life. And I just kind of, you know, just started helping a few guys. And basically, really, I went on this journey to change my life because I was struggling so much. And then as I was documenting it and talking about it, on my Facebook page and sharing stories and stuff like that. Then guys started reaching out and can you help me? Do you think you could, you know, help me to rekindle my relationship, with my wife and be a better father. And I'm like, well, you know, yeah, okay, let's, let's give it a go. I'll start applying what I've learned. And then it kind of just built on there. And it's just got to this point now where, you know, it's now like my thing that I do just helping guys, you know, turn their lives around basically. Yeah. That's, uh, mm. that's awesome, man. I think that, um, when, when it comes to helping like that, there's people that go into those ruts and some people just turn in and they kind of cocoon and don't talk to anybody. Mm. And then you have people who bleed all over everybody. <laughs> and, then, and then you have people in between who share enough of the story to connect with people. And then we all kind of move forward. And it sounds like you're kind of mm. that, that middle place there. Yeah, man. Well, I've, I've been in all places. I've been in a place which I call the lone wolf, trying to go it alone, trying to figure this all out by myself. Um, I've been in that place where I've kind of just vomited all my stuff over people, my problems. And, you know, I, I, I had a problem for every solution, you know, and um, I've been in that place too. And then I kind of got to that, that place where I'm at now, where it's kind of like openly sharing about my journey. And, um, you know, it's, it's crazy, man, because I've got a video at the moment that's out there and it's like 100,000 views, comments and all that. And I've got guys like someone pointed this out and they said, like, the guy's just commenting on this on this post and they're saying, like, um, I've never shared this with anyone before. But, like, your story has just spoken to me. I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling. With it. I've never shared that before. And and I think there's um, it's, it's used quite a lot now. And I don't really like it, the word vulnerability. But I think there's... um. It's overused a bit too much, I think, now, like the word vulnerability. But I think, like, that place where you could just share yourself and be yourself allows other people to do the same, right, without any shame and guilt. And the conversations I have a lot of guys is just like, I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'm the only person going through it. And, and that was my story. I thought I was the only person going through it, man. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what about vulnerability don't you like? Like, how do you feel it's being overused? I just think now, um, I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with, with vulnerability. I just think that now a lot of people caught, cottoned on that it's a bit of a market employee now. You know, like people are over, overusing the, the vulnerability as a way to kind of catch people in, you know. Um, and then that's just natural thing, really, isn't it? If someone sees something that's working and then they've got to try it and they've got to try it and they've got to do it. And I think now it can be like, oh, I'm just being... I'm just being vulnerable. And like, I think when people kind of go, I'm just being vulnerable, being vulnerable is, you know, it's just, it's just a thing at the moment. It's just a bit of a trend. It's another thing. And uh, I think you can tell the people that are being vulnerable versus the people that are doing it as a, as a way of a hook to try and get people in, yes. you know? So, yeah. 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 So how do you feel about this mental health month awareness? Do you think that people just piggyback on that as well? 
Um, well, man, like that's a good question, man. I guess you're. I guess in any walks of life, man, you're always going to get. Um, you're always going to get that in any kind of scenario, I guess, man. Um, where they're just piggybacking on it. I guess. I guess it comes down to. I think the thing is, is if someone's not really experienced it, if someone's not really been through it, um, and they're kind of sharing about it and talking about it and marketing to people for it, I think there's a lack of integrity there. But I think if someone's generally been through it and they're helping people and they're sharing their story, and like I say, vulnerability in that in that area is absolutely fine. If they're you know they're sharing their mental health problems and it's real, I just think the side of it where you know a lot of people haven't been through it and people have been caught kind of lying about their situation and then they they use that as a way to try and sell stuff to people that's where it gets a little bit you know so no i don't think i don't think there's anything wrong with the with the mental health kind of movement i think it's a good thing man i think it's a good thing but it's not definitely i just think with anything man you you, you're going to get that extremes aren't you you're going to get the people that are genuine you're going to get the people that that are a little bit fake that are in it for themselves man but it's an interesting interesting thing yeah. It is. Like like what you just said too, I love what you're saying, like you had a you had a problem for every solution. That's that that comes up a lot too, right? People are showing their vulnerability and be like, Hey, what about this? And then they're like, No, I already tried that. Or hey, oh no, that's not gonna work. <laughs> you're like, oh, Yeah. I, I actually had a guy the other week and I spoke to him and he he went through Messenger and he's like, Man, I wanna change and all that and I was like, Okay, he said, I tried that he said uh, his actual words were I tried that old C B C B T um a cognitive behavior therapy said i tried that a couple of times that was i tried that a couple of times that was a load of bullshit i'm like dude you've tried it a couple of times like <laughs> anything takes more than a couple of times to change and the, the reason i laugh is like i, I I'm, a, I'm i'm a recovered alcoholic i've been sober nearly 14 years now and um i, I got sober at the time through ia but originally when i when i first went i remember i remember one night i went to a meeting uh, and then the next day, I, I wasn't ready to change. I wanted to change, but I didn't need to change, right? Which we could jump into that kind of metaphor because uh, you hear a lot of that from gurus. But I wanted to change, but I didn't need to change, right? And um, I went to a meeting, and the next night I was in the pub with my friend. And, and it made me laugh because I, I was talking to my friend, and uh, I said I went, to, I went to a recovery last night. I went to AA. And he went, what did you go there for? And I went, I think I've got a problem with drink. And he went, <laughs> he went to me, how was it? And I went, yeah, it didn't work, mate. I'm back in the pub, and I, I went to one meeting for an hour, right. and and then it's like, like that was going to save my life, but yeah. I didn't do nothing with it, mate. Yeah, you know. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's like exercise, right? Like people come and like, wow, that's great. That's you know that that new move is going to work great, and uh, I only did it once, and it didn't really make a difference, right? Like, mm. same thing with our the way that we approach uh, our physical health as our mental health to something. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I, I have that a little bit with, with stretching myself. So I'm quite tight around my legs and things like that from running and I stretch. And, you know, the thing is, like, you know, with, with stretching, as you probably know yourself, you don't really see a tangible result. It takes a long time, doesn't it? You know, like if you're lifting weights, you start seeing muscles and all that. But when you're kind of stretching, you you might, oh, I can reach my toes a little bit more now, but that's taken quite quite a little while to do that. And you don't see that tangible result. So it's probably quite easy for a lot of people just to kind of, uh, you know, I'll forget that. I won't do that. I'll just get back to lifting really heavy weights and not stretching again, you know, because I don't see that instant gratification and the transformation from it, right? Yes. yes exactly. <laughs> um, so one of the things I, I was looking on your, your recent post about delusions mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and truth and evidence and stuff like that. Can you unpack that a little bit more, your, your story about your son? Yeah, so uh, basically, um, my son's six, and um, I take him over to this mountain biking track because my my oldest boy is very um, he loves winning, he loves pushing himself, he loves he loves um, he loves you know really pushing himself. He loves mountain biking, he loves all that kind of rough and tough tumble sort of sports, right? So my job as a father is to guide him on that journey, right? Um, you know, to so guide him through that journey, kind of coach him and help him. So one of the things is mountain biking, and we're over this this mountain biking track, and um, you know, he's hitting some big big hills, going down these big hills, and hitting some jumps and and stuff like that. And um, we was we was over there the other day, and I was filming him, and like he's on his bike and he's hitting his jumps, and and he's like, oh well, did you see that one, Daddy? Did you see that one? Now he's only getting a little bit off the ground like this, right? But 
you know, if you've ever been on a bike and done a jump or on a snowboarder, like myself, I was a snowboarder as well. Like you hit a jump, you think you're like a thousand foot in the air when you're only actually like getting off the ground like this. So he's hitting these jumps and I'm recording him and I'm, yeah, well done, son. Like, you know, let's try and go a little bit faster. Let's, let's try this and jump. Anyway, so he's watched the video back. We're sitting indoors and he watched the video back and he went to me, oh, daddy, he said, I, I, I'm not actually jumping that high, am I? He said, it's not very high, is it? And I said, well, I said, it's a start, right? You, you, you're not, you're new into it. It's a start. I said, but okay. So what would you like to do about that? And he said, well, um, I'd like to jump a bit higher. And I said, okay. I said, so how can we do that? What do we need to do? And, he, and he's like, okay, um, maybe I need to go a bit faster. Maybe I need to get a bit of a longer run up. Maybe I need to stand up. I said, okay, maybe we need to, you know, and I'm a mountain biking expert, but I'm just helping him to, to coach himself to see how he can solve, um, get a solution to his problem. And um, so we've gone back down and I started filming him again and he's hitting his jumps. He's going a bit faster, trying his different techniques and he's getting higher and higher. And I was just watching him and I was just like, and I was just reflecting on my life because I do that a lot with, with a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that I watch, a lot of stuff I listen to, a lot of stuff that I interact with. I kind of just reflect it back on myself. And, and I'm like, man, it's just, it's just funny because, you know, he's on his bike and he's hitting his jumps and getting about that high off the ground. And he's going, oh, wow, daddy, it's really high. It's massive, isn't it? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like kind of deluding himself, right? Because he doesn't know no different because he can't see it. But then when you see the reality and you see um, the actual what's going on, like the video of it, um, then he's like, oh, actually, I'm not jumping that high, am I? And I'm like, well, no, son, but it's a start. So what do we need to do? So, um, so, so really, it's a reflection of my life, really. Like, like how much do we delude ourselves in believing we're doing better than we actually are, right? And... And I always say to like guys in my group, like, is your is your audio matching your video, right? Is what you're saying matching what you're doing, or are you deluding yourself? Like, if I was to follow you around with a camera and watch you and film you, would you be being the father that you said you're being? Are you being the husband that you said you're you're being? Are you doing the things that you say you're going to do, or are you just flapping your gums and talking about it? And just that watching my son hit them jumps and even for myself because i hit jumps over there you know he filmed me hitting a jump and i was just like it feels a lot higher than it actually is and it's just that representation of like we sometimes kid ourselves that we're doing a lot better than we actually are man that's yeah no it's so true mm. that mm. Uh, that delusion it's um yeah, I think that's that's the struggle, right? Like, I mean, we want integrity, we want consistency in our actions, and and sometimes that's intentional, and sometimes it's not. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think, like, for something that I always say to the guys, like something we do inside inside my group with the guys is like, um, we track and measure everything. So we have our goals, we have our plans, and we every day we're tracking and measuring. We have challenges that we do, and we track and measuring them measuring them and i say to the guys i say what will happen after a period of time is you start seeing trends right so let's just say for example your your goal for the next 90 days uh is to uh quit drinking right let's just say it's quit drinking and you see after about three weeks or four weeks that you're not hitting your targets well then you'll see a trend so when you see the truth and the trend of it, like you see it on paper or you see a video of it, then you can actively do something about it because you can't kid to yourself. You can't lie to yourself about it. You know, and it's like my son, when he's just see the video, he's just like, dad, I thought I was jumping higher than I was. And I was just thinking to myself, man, the amount of times I thought that I was doing more in my life. Um, and then the people have pointed out that actually I wasn't, I was just kidding myself. Right. Mm. I was kidding myself. So yeah, man. Um, I think it's very important to, for the guys I work with, especially it's like having, I say it's like having an animal to hunt. We, we need an animal to hunt, not quite literally, but we need things to focus on. Um, we need things to move forward with in our life. And, and it's, if you're not tracking and measuring it, if you create any kind of success, right, you're not going to know how you've done it. And if you're not creating this success, you're not going to see where the trends are and where, where you're slipping up in your life. Right. So are you big mm. on um, establishing habits or more setting up those goals outright? Uh, both, man, both. Um, I met, like, I'm a massive, I kind of like, I don't know, you may have heard of it, but it's like, like for us inside 
what I talk about is like the pyramid scheme. It's kind of like um, being, doing, achieving, right? So you'll have, you'll have people that are, are one side, like uh, that are so much of being and they don't achieve a lot. And then you'll have guys that overachieve, but they're really unhappy. And when I say being, like, how are you being as a man? How are you being as a father? How are you being as a husband? How are you interacting with the world? What value are you bringing? Right? Then you'll have the other side where you'll have people that are overachieving um, and they're quite unhappy, right? They can be goal orientated, they can achieve something, they're unhappy. But I said, when you get those two in balance, like the being and doing, then achieving, you know, if you get to drive around in a Ferrari, that's wonderful. But wouldn't it be nice to drive around in a Ferrari where you feel actually really happy instead of driving around in a Ferrari to try and make you feel happy, right? Yes. So, yes. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like anything, isn't it? Like, uh, you know, people say to me, well, like, let's just take coaching, for instance, like co the coaching industry. Um, you know, and I, look, I've, I've made my mistakes in the past with, with my own life and, and building businesses and, and doing things and probably not being the most ethical person in the past, right? You know, um, in my earlier days of doing stuff and that. And it's like the coaching industry. You're going to get coaches that are really good yeah. And you're going to get coaches that are just in it just to make a quick buck, you know. Um, does that make the actual – does that make vulnerability – like if we take, for example, because people are now using it, does that make vulnerability a bad thing? No, it doesn't. It just – some people being vulnerable and really helping people, other people just using it as a tool just to try and get something out of, out of someone, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So mm. how long have you been doing this coaching full-time? Like when did you decide, like – to just jump in I'm, I'm two feet in and just gonna go for this so i, I kind of done it gradually i done it gradually um I'm, uh, it's, it's something that I, I always teach people play the one percent game um it's very easy to set these massive great big goals and and, and they say burn the bridges you hear this in the personal development burn the bridges for me i just play the one percent game I, I just look at moving forward one percent better than i was the day before right being a yeah. better father better husband better man and and that's how i built my business and that's how i kind of moved forward with um with my business so it's like full-time work to part-time work and then full-time like coaching and it's just and it's been it's been a long journey man like you know uh, i don't know you know i've had people reach out to me go oh man like i'd love to get into coaching it seems really simple and i'm like man like coaching men's a really hard gig right getting men to really open up and talk about what's going on for them i'm wanting to do there's one thing i'm admitting it it's like you said earlier, you know, there's, I think mental health is amazing thing. And let's talk up, let's talk more about our problems. But now the problem is, is we're stuck in talking about our problems and we're not got the action phase. And this is what I kind of bring to guys. It's like, let's, it's good talking about it, but some guys are fucking sick and tired of just talking about it. What do I do? They've got no solution to it. And, and let's bridge that gap between where you are to where you want to get to, man. So yes. yeah, man, it's kind of, it's kind of that, no, action trumps everything, you know. Yeah, action trumps absolutely. everything. Well, I think action yeah, trumps. That's what we're, what we're saying earlier too. That action sometimes is so uncomfortable that people don't want to hear that part. Like they want to, they want to pat themselves on the back for being vulnerable, and they want to feel good about themselves because they had a conversation. But when mm. you actually put the demand on them and make them uncomfortable with the fact that you're going to have to let something go to get to where you need to get to, that's mm. when they pull away, right? So. Mm it's uh that's that's the challenge part is really get into that action step now that i've let everything out right yeah well that was that was my problem i become i become very I'd say addicted I've, I've, I've been addicted to many things but i become very addicted to insights and clarity right so i'd be i'd sit there and i'd be like oh i've had an insight about this problem in my life and i'd be like oh and i'd get this overwhelming feeling like oh man like that's yeah i see something a bit different now but what didn't happen is it was never followed up with action. So yes. that insight was just, would just disappear. And then the whole behavior would come back. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I would just fall back into that trap and that loop of doing the same thing again, because it's great to have the insight. It's great to have the realization that maybe life's not going how you want it to go and you want it to make a change, but there's got to be followed up by some kind of action. Yes. Um, and that's kind of what you said. And I didn't fully answer it earlier when you said about, uh, the habits and, and the goals and things like that. It's, it, it's like building better habits um, and structures in your life and having goals is mm -hmm. great. Like I said, let's move forward with that. But what we start seeing is patterns forming. Like, like I said, like if you're not quitting drinking, so the drinking's a tip of the iceberg. What we need to look at is, is what's the, 
I say the I say the 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 iceberg that sunk the Titanic. It weren't the, the fin on top that sunk the Titanic. It was what's was underneath, right. and with habits like what you were saying, um, that's really like our stories and misunderstandings. So when I struggled with drink, drink weren't really the problem. The real problem was until I got this was, oh, um, life's boring, right? Mm. So I had a story that life was boring and I wasn't good enough, or there was something that. I'd done that made life not so boring, made me feel better about myself, but it was drinking drugs, right? So yes, the habit setting goals, but also you've got to get to the bottom of what is driving those habits, right? And that's usually some kind of story or misunderstanding you're carrying around with yourself. Mm -hmm. Sorry, man, I digress massively there. <laughs> no, it's, it's all good. It's, yeah, it's, this is just the nature of the conversation. It goes where it goes, right? Mm. So with now men coming in to speak with you, Hmm. are you seeing some similarity like some comments throughout with these guys where like as soon as they start to sit down and talk you like heard the story before okay this is what like do you hear like the same overarching themes coming up with everyone that's coming in yeah 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 uh, definitely definitely there's um a big one a big one is is uh lost they feel lost their emotions, they don't know how to, how to harness, like, uh, they're very aggressive, very angry, very frustrated, anxiety and depression. It usually comes out with, the common thread for me is guys, they're either drinking, they're either taking drugs, or they're overworking, right? Yes. Um, they're very common threads that I see. They're very common threads. And, and it usually comes down to their moods, and they're just feeling lost in their life. Now, here's the most common thing that I see among men. It's when I ask them what they want, they haven't got a fucking clue what they want, right? Yeah. And, and I'm like, like myself, I didn't know what I wanted in life. If you don't know what you want, how are you ever going to change it? How are you ever going to get yeah. to a destination if you don't know where you're going, right? So they're some of the most common things I see. Guys that, that are drifting, they feel lost, stress, anxiety. Um, they want to change, but they don't know what they want. And they're some of the most common things. And then they're using drink and drugs and working. And this, what's going on at the moment with the lockdowns, ex I say exposed a lot of guys. A lot of guys are, are reaching out and kind of saying to me, like, man, like, uh, now I haven't got work to distract myself and get out of the house. I'm, I'm really realizing, like, how much I really do struggle with life, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I haven't got that thing to keep them busy. You haven't lost her? I haven't got that thing to keep them busy. Right. You know? exactly. And like you were saying about not knowing what they want, it's like, you know, you go into a mall and you see the little map, you know, mm. that little directory of everything. Is, it's one thing to know, you know, like where you want to go. And the other thing is to know where you are right now. Right. And you mm. can't figure out where you want to go if you don't know exactly where you are. And then you really can't go anywhere if you don't know where you're going. So it's like this, this vicious cycle. I'm sure you're seeing with guys mm. who want don't know who they are, or where they are, mm -hmm. and then two don't know where they want to go, but they're just unhappy with where they're at. Yeah, 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 and that's why they get stuck in that circle, that, which they, they kind of describe as the rut and all that, just repeating the same behaviors and patterns and going around in circles because they don't want to be here, but they don't know where they want to be. They just like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to feel this way. Yes, but they don't know where they want to get to or where they want to feel. You know, when right. you just like, you ask them like. What do you want? And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, well, so there you, you go. Say, after they say, I don't know, like, what's your next question, Mr. Coach? <laughs> My next question is, well, if you don't know where you're going, how do you expect to get there, right? How do you expect <laughs> right. to get there? Like, yeah. if I said to you, if I said to you, I'm going to come and meet you in Canada, and he's like, yeah, cool. And you didn't give me no directions, right? And, and I just come out to Canada. Canada's a big place, right? What's my chances of finding you? So this is kind of the work that we do is this. And, and it's a, one of the things that, that comes up a lot, what a lot of guys say is like, um, and I hear it a lot in the self-help self uh, industry. It's kind of like, oh, I need to find myself again. I need to find myself. And when I say to people, it's, it's, you know, it, it's not about finding yourself. It's about building the person you want to become because you'll spend your life sitting about trying to find who you are and, you know, who am I? I feel lost. I don't know who I am. And this is one of the problems with the guys that feel lost. I'm like, it's not about trying to find who you are. It's about building the man you want to be. What do you want to be? How do you want to act with your kids? And it's kind of breaking it down like that for them, you know, because in their head, it's like, I want to get back to the man I was five years ago. And I'm like, 
Well, that man from five years ago has fucking got you to where you are now. So you don't want to go back to that, my friend. Okay. Yeah. You're here. Let's build something better, right? Let's build something yeah. better. Right. And everyone has a handle on what they don't want to be. Mm. They, they mm -hmm. got that nailed down. They know what they don't want to be, but they don't know what they do want to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? So like, so that's, that's, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, like just hammer that down a little bit more. Someone's like, I, yeah, I, I don't know what I want. I don't know where, you know, all those different things. I like what you're saying about building up that, you know, that person that they want to be. And um, how much of that is discovering, how much of that is discovering what they already have in them? So, sorry, so that getting cut out a little bit there, man. Oh, sorry, yeah. So I think it's like, it's like you're just trying to discover exactly what, what they already have in them, like what, what traits or what, yeah. what, uh, what's we're looking for like their moral code whatever it is about them that that's important like is it more about just kind of unearthing that stuff that's already in them instead of just looking out there and saying i want to be like this guy or i want to have this mm. yeah definitely man definitely i i think most most people the, the problem is is here's a delusion of it again delusion is most people pe most people deep down when you start digging do know what they want but they don't believe in themselves have been able to do it Yes. They don't trust it. They, they don't believe that they could do it, right? Um, or they don't think they're worthy of it. They don't think they deserve it, right? So, like, so, well, what do you want? I don't know. Well, if I had a magic wand and I could wave it now in front of you, what would it be? I just want to be happy. Okay, but what does happiness look like, you know? What does that look like to you? So when guys kind of don't know, they kind of do, but they've just never explored it. And that's like creating that space with guys. It's like exploring it. And then, and then getting them to see that that's potentially possible, but actually get them moving forward closer to it. You know, it's one thing seeing it, but then it's the second thing actually moving closer to it and start moving forward to, to building the person they want to become, right? Right. So, so you got to mm. create that safe space, basically, is what you're saying, where they can explore what success would look like. Yeah, what success looks like, right? We've all got our own definition of success. Um, what does success look like? for yourself what, what what do you want right and it's like you know i think we we live in a time now where it's just it's very easy to um people can really get caught up in overthinking stuff and they uh, really want um certainty like yes. that's what big thing as i want this but also i want the certainty that that's going to work out and it's like well <laughs> until you take action we ain't gonna know if it's going to work out right that's yeah. that's the key thing here Right. Yeah. Right. Well, that kind of goes full circle to what you're saying about your son, right? I think that men in general are wired for adventure. Yeah. Wild right? at heart, man. Wild at heart. He wants he wants to get ten feet of air on every jump, but he's getting ten inches right now. So like but he's after that adventure. I think somewhere along the line, as men, we get so wounded that we mm. stop chasing after that adventure. Mm. Yeah. But oh man, so true. Like like five, I call them the five fundamentals, what we work with in our group. And like we set goals and we work on these five areas, which is self, health, wealth, relationship, and having fun, right? And the, that's a big one, fun, because a lot of guys I speak to are like, what do you do for fun? What do you do for enjoyment? They're like, nothing. I get up, go to work, come home, might play with the kids for a little bit, watch TV, go to bed. And a lot of guys are just bored with life. Because yes. if they've lost that sense of adventure, you know, they've lost, they've lost that sense of, of playfulness. They've lost that sense of creativity, yes. you know, and they've just kind of got into a box and just crawled into a box and just do the same thing. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Great. Great. Mm. That adventure of being lost. I always ask people about that. Like, what do you do for play? Like when I have fitness professionals on here, like I see like no, uh, Beyond Pilates just came on and there's a few people on here. And one of the questions that I asked Beyond, what do you do for your know, Pilates and how do you teach people and all that stuff? It's like, what do you do for fun? What do you do outside? What do you do off the mm. mat, so to speak, right? And just to get an understanding, mm. oh, I, you know, I go on my boat or I like to just go for a walk or I like to surf. Like, I love to hear those side of things because that's part of taking care of our soul. That's a part of soul, you know, allowing ourselves to be our best version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, totally, totally. Like hobbies, I, I think 
I think for men, um, you know, as you were saying there, like men are venturous men. I think hobbies for men is a massive thing, that especially like com- some kind of combat, combat sport is good. You know, for guys, you know, we, we've got this thing called, te- called testosterone and we get a lot of pent up energy and, and stuff like that, aggression. And I think that, that that's, um, you know, I think combat sport, com- like I played not ice hockey, same as hockey, same as ice hockey, but on skates, so street hockey. Yes. I played that and it's very competitive and that's a, that's, that's a great way to kind of like harness a lot of this energy, you know, um, you know and I think that's very important. Especially, yeah. especially like doing things that are fun, man. Definitely, definitely, hundred yeah. percent, man. Not guys are not having much fun in their lives. A lot of guys are living very unfulfilled, ha- unhappy lives, and they're not really enjoying it at all. And then, like, it's like that saying: "As the tide rises, all the boats rise." And this is what I say to the guys: like, when you're down and you're and you're feeling this, your kids are seeing that, your wife's seeing that, how you're dealing with your stress, right? Your kids don't really listen to much what you say, but they'll always watch what you're doing and they're watching of how you're dealing with stress. They're watching how you're dealing with interactions, how you treating your wife, right? You're always constantly swearing and screaming and shouting. You're showing your daughter what her future husband's going to be like. And you're showing your boys how they're going to treat their mother, uh, treat a woman when they're older. Right. So you've got a job to kind of step up and lead by example, right? Not just flap your gums and tell them what they should and shouldn't do. Right. So, yeah, yeah, that's the saying. There's a lot more that is caught than taught with kids. Right? <laughs> I like that, man. Yeah, he's, yeah. yeah. A lot more is caught than taught, definitely. Because they're seeing all those different things. And, you know, if I take it back to exercise for a minute, one of the trends that we see happening is the stretching, recovery, those kind of things are coming to the mainstream as part of your training. So it's not just about my squats and deadlifts and my, my, my high performance my plyometrics and stuff, it's, uh, am I doing Pilates? Am I doing stretching? Am I working on functional range? Am I working on my mobi- mobility? That used to be on the sidelines. You train and then you go and you stretch later. Now people are recognizing that that recovery is part of your training. Mm. I think mm. it's the same with play. And I think it's the same with fun. People are recognizing now that we need to play. We need to have fun. And this is part of our productivity. Mm. Like, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 100%. This- this yeah. is something yeah. that's I'm taking a break from my productivity to play. It's like I'm going to be more productive if I actually carve out. What would you recommend? An hour a week, ten minutes a day. Like, what's what's your formula for play in the in the balance of your week? Um, I guess I like to do well. We're, obviously, where we do our we do our goals, we're tracking them every single day. So it's every day for us. We we'll have some we'll have some fun, and now that's that's down to the individual. So like, fun for me will be. Uh, getting out on my mountain bike with my boy at the moment, right? Um, fun for me is walking in the woods with no headphones on, no phone on. Um, fun for me might be, you know, uh, 10 or 20 minutes of meditation a day, right? It, it's just very personal. It could be a power nap. It's just whatever's really important to you. But I think the main thing is like, if you've got something you want to try, like, you know, this is what I said to the guys, when was the last time you tried something new? Yes. It's like, when was the last time you tried something new? They're like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, there you go. Like, why not? Well, I don't want to, because we've, we've asked it straight away. We want to go from zero to 100 and we want to like, you know, we don't, we don't want to go through that journey. We just want to start no. and be there at the end we, bin, right? Yes. We want competence <laughs> right now. Yeah. Right now. And it's like, just go and try something, have some fun with stuff. You know, I, I've, over the years, I've become very fascinated with like the outdoors more and, foraging and stuff like that and learning stuff about that and getting out my mountain bike with my kid and, and things like that that's just fun for me you know like yes. tomorrow's wednesday tomorrow will be a no phone day my phone will go off i won't have my phone on for the day i got to go out with the family it's a no work day for me tomorrow and just go out and just enjoy the presence with the kids because when i take i go out with my kids and i take this device with me i'm more than likely going to tend to pull this device out of my pocket um more than i should do Yes. And maybe the kids are talking and not fully present. So, you know, I've learned that about myself. It's just like, if I just turn it off and leave it home, I don't even think about it, right? If it's yes. on me and it goes off, it's just easy to pull it out, man. So tomorrow's going to be a fun day for me. We're going to go mountain biking in the morning, me and my boy, and have some fun. Then later on, we'll go out with the whole family. Yeah. Man, mm. that sounds so good. <laughs> <I'm like> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think it's good as well because what it does, like, 
you know, this is what I say to the guys is when you break up your work, right, and have some play, then you're more energized and excited to get back to work. But if it's just constant work, 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 hustle, grind, work, hustle, grind, it gets tiring, right? And it gets like, it's the same as if you just played, played. I'll give an example, snowboarding, right? I haven't been for, for a long time. And I'd go snowboarding, we'd go for a week. And I'd, we'd get out there, I'm all excited. I'm like a little kid in a candy shop. I'm on the plane, can't wait, get there. I want to get my board out, get on the, on the slopes. I'm like, oh man, I'm out from the moment. The slopes open to the moment it shuts. After three or four days, like at the beginning, I'm like, man, we should have booked three weeks out here. I want to stay out here for three weeks. We should do a month next time. After three or four days, I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, like if I was to do this for two weeks, I'd kind of just get a little bit bored in the end because that's the thing. All work, 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 work. You burn out, you, you grind. And, but all play, 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 play. You know, as the same as the same effects, it's kind of matching that balance with it, right? Finding that balance with it. So, what's your thoughts on all this, like hashtag take no days off, hashtag grind don't stop, hashtag, you know, mm. like. <laughs> Listen, look, uh, you know, I, I shared this in my story when I had my meltdown five and a half years ago, right? Mm. Um, I had my meltdown five and a half years ago. I, I'd I'd been sober for many years, still struggled with anxiety and stress, and then. I'd got to a point in my life where I was building my business. So I had my wife. I just married my wife. I had my kid, newborn kid, Riley, my oldest boy, he was six months old. And I was building my business. And I was going out early in the morning. I was coming home late at night. I was hustling and grinding. Um, I hired a coach, right? And this is a really important aspect that I get across to people, right? I hired a coach, a business coach. And this business coach was like, he was a single guy. And it was money, money, right? And, yeah. you know, that's fine. That's, yeah. what I, that's where I was. It was make the money, hustle, grind, make the money, hustle, grind. And he's like, right, do this, do this. And what I started doing is, and we've just released a podcast on this about gurus, following your gurus. Be careful who you follow. Do they have the life that you want, right? Have, and if they, if they do, are they living the life that you want as well, right? So I'm following a guy that's single, He's working all the hours under the sun. I got into a mastermind of him, and that's what he installed in me. You've got hustle, grind, hustle, grind. So I've got a wife and kid at home, and I'm hustling and grinding, hustling and grinding, hardly sleeping. And literally, the laptop would be next to me. My wife would go up to the toilet. My laptop would be open quickly, do something. Laptop down, back under the fin before she'd come down. Clients calling me, no boundaries, constantly answering phones, not present with the wife, not present with the kid, constantly working. Um, and that's when I had my meltdown, right? Because I'd done the hashtag hustle grind. And that's okay for some people. Some people might want to do that. And, and that's fine, right? But for me, I've got a family and a wife at home, right? I've got a wife and I've got kids. Hashtag kind of hustle grind, no sleep and all that. That's not for me, right? And it's very easy to be duped into believing that that's what you're going to do, right? So a prime example of that is... And I like Gary Vaynerchuk, right? Have you heard of Gary Vaynerchuk? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. I like Gary Vaynerchuk. Shares some very, very cool stuff. But I kind of pulled away from that because <clears throat> basically he just doesn't live the life that I want, right? Yeah, he's got all this money and all that stuff, and he's got his own personal mission. So what I started finding is coaches and mentors that were building businesses like this. So when I built my business, I built a little life like that around the business. Yeah. This time what I'd done is I built a life around my, I built, um, I built a business around my life. I reversed yeah. engineered it. So this yeah. is how I want my life to be with my wife, with my kids. Nice. And then I build my business around that, you know? Mm. But, yeah. You know, mm. that's right. And, and for those of you who are listening out there guys, like that's exactly it. Like don't feel like there's shame in your game. If you're not hustling and grinding 24 seven, you know, and just dropping everything else in your life just to get to this point. You have to look at what these people's lives look like. Like what you said, it's true. Like when you say, look at their life, I'm, I'm like, look at their whole life, not look at their bank accounts, but mm -hmm. look at their relationships, look at the, the demands that they have in their life and do those demands parallel with the demands that you have in your life, right? Because their expectations of you are going to be realistic if you have, you know, kids at home and a wife and whatever. So, yeah. No, I, it's, I totally with you on. It, like success always looks easy and great from the outside. Like you see, you see people, you don't see people's journey. You just see kind of like some 
you see them five years down the line and you don't know what they've done and all that to get there and, mm. and things like that. And, and success always looks easy. Um, but when you get in the trenches, it's far from easy. <laughs> it's far from easy, yeah. depending how you define success. But for me, success for me, when people say, what do you do? What are you? And I'm like, I'm a father, I'm a husband, and I'm a coach, man. Like, that's important to me. Um, Dude, and, and it's easy so- to get caught. So to jump on, you on that, Michael, but do you always present it in that order? I'm a, I, I, usually I'm, a, I'm a father, I'm a husband, and I'm a coach. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's interesting that you put it that way because whenever I ask people that who are you question, I always listen for what they present first. I'm the CEO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, I'm a yeah. dad with three kids or I own, you know what I mean? Like as I listen to that because like sometimes that – you know, it comes in order of importance. Sometimes it's just subconsciously the thing that's at the front front of their mind, right? Depending on the content. Mm. But, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, and my business, what I had years ago, all my identity was tied up in it. And when my business went, when I had my meltdown and burned it to the ground, mm-hmm. I fucking struggled m- mentally massively because that was my identity. That's who Michael was. What do you do? Oh, I'm a business owner that's got this business, right? And, yes. and you know, when that went, that taken, I was like... <sighs> Who am I now? <laughs> I was at that point with them guys like, who the fuck's Michael? I don't know. Um, and then I started building this person like that I've got to now, you know, and continue to build this, continue to build, you know, continue to move forward. Yeah. This hmm. is, man, talk about common threads. Like uh, Mike is just saying great points, fellas, because when we were talking the other day, I've had uh, NBA players on here and they, you know, got cut from the NBA and moved to Europe or they've – on a different team and all these things happen in their lives in that short career span of being a pro athlete that mm. if you get cut and you have no hand on really who you are, you lose your identity when you can't say I'm a pro basketball player anymore. No, no man. I, I, I was uh, coaching a guy this morning. that's a professional boxer. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and he was telling me his goals about becoming a British, a British, uh, um, a British champion, right? He said, I've got a goal to get, to get this, to get this, to get that. And I was like, cool, man. That's, that's good goals, right? He's like, yeah. And I said, but what about after that? And he went, I, I've never thought about that before. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, like not a lot of people do. And this is why people fall into that trap. Like they achieve their goal. Yes. And then they don't think about anything else on beyond, beyond that. Like if well, I could blue mom, go on, go on. Yeah, no, that's, no I, I, it's true. And But as uh, one of the guys I had on, uh, one of his basketball players was saying, you almost feel like you're betraying the sport or you're betraying the thing that you're in right now when you think about what's after. Mm, mm, yeah. I totally agree with that. And it's like, um, so what I, he asked me some advice around this, like, what should I do? And I said, well, like, what we do is we create a vision for our life. What do we want to achieve and what, who do we want to become, right? Yeah. So I'm yes. creating a vision, right? A, a greater vision. I, I want to be the best father I could be, the best husband I'll be, I want to be. I want to be the best men's coach I could be. I want to be a decent person. Um, I want to live with integrity. I want to live in honesty. And yes. it's okay to want to be the champion of boxing, but just understand that's not who you are. You're bigger no. than that. That's just something yes. you do, right? Yeah. And that's fine as well. Like in my group, I'm very much all about doing stuff. We, we're very doing stuff orientated but also as well as like if you're doing stuff to try and avoid something else then that's a problem right so we work with both of it who you're being and what you're doing man but yeah totally man like in england obviously football there's so many footballers that when they well obviously football's massive in england and um when they when they when they finish their footballing careers they suffer with depression and mental health issues because they're just lost in who they are they've not got their identity anymore you know you think yes being in front of all those thousands of people cheering you on and then one day it's that's it it's gone and they struggle with that because they've got nothing else they've got no vision later on in their life or what they want to do you know yes yes and Michael, mm-hmm. you put that in such a good way it gives us permission like i mean if i go back to this this basketball player he's thinking okay the ball's going to stop bouncing at some point i need to think about what i'm going to do for a career when i'm 27 and unemployed and no one is cheering for me Mm. And, but when you presented the way you did, where you're saying, well, let's look at your whole life. Let's look at the fact that this basketball is only one corner of your life or boxing is only one corner of your life. You're going to mm. chase after your golden glove or your championships, all these different things. But there's other parts of your life, too, that 
you're moving on to, I think that that shifts our mindset from thinking of that championship as the goal, as opposed to thinking about that championship as a checkpoint in the bigger goal of being a person of integrity or, or a good father or an upstanding, you know, whatever it is that we're chasing after, those are just checkpoints along the way in the bigger mm. lifespan, as opposed to making that the destination and our whole identity yeah. in mm. you know, being a pro. Yeah, like the, the boxer. Go out there and be the best fucking boxer you could be. Go out and win that championship, man. Like, and be at the top. Like, like I've just finished watching um, uh, The Last Dance. Yes. The best documentary I've, I've watched. I love Michael Jordan. Love Michael Jordan. His mindset, the way he approaches things. He's a winner. I love that. that I love that, you know. But I'm pretty sure when he knew that time was up, that he had other things to focus on after. Yes. And this is like, he had that mindset, like to be the best while you're in it, be the best you can be. Right. And then when that comes, when that curtain closes, mm -hmm. that's cool, man. Like now what are you going to go and do? What do you want to go and be the best in now? Or what do you want to go and focus your energy and time on now? And I'm, I'm, I'm sure Michael Jordan was like, as I know, I know that from stuff that I've read, he's very goal orientated and he had this vision and he, and he's the best basketball player that I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, I'm sure now he's got goals and visions now and now for, for another another adventure. It's the same as with Kobe Bryant, right? Yes. He finished and then he started this other foundation doing stuff and, and his business before, unfortunately, he lost his life. But he had goals and visions for his life, man. And it's like, while you're in that, like my son, when you're on your mountain bike, yes. be the best fucking mountain bike rider you can be yes. and push yourself. When right. you're off it and you're playing for your toys, be the best kid you could be playing with your fucking toys, man. It's cool, right? It's cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you drop them in the F-bombs when you're actually pep-topping them too? Or? Do I what? Do you drop those F-bombs when you're giving those pep talks as well? Or? Sometimes I do, yeah. <laughs> but but we have agreements, me and my son, right? We have agreements. So I, I say to him, look, daddy swears. I If you're indoors and you swear... I kind of get it. We, it's not a great thing. We're going to, we're going to, I don't want you just kind of walking about saying it all the time, but I'm not going to condemn you because I do it, yes. but it stays inside our four walls and you don't swear at mummy and daddy or your brother and sister. But he might hear me say, they go, daddy, you said fuck. And I'm like, okay, sorry, son. Let's not say it anymore. <laughs> but, but I do, man. I do. I do. I do. More cop than top, brother. It's more cop than top. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah. Jordan, he was the best basketball player, and then he went into motorcycle racing, and he wasn't the best motorcycle racer. He went into baseball, and he wasn't the best baseball player, right? Like, mm. what do we do with those things that when we chase after something with all that same fervor, but it's not the thing that we're actually good at? How do we handle those disappointments? Yeah, man. Well, again, it's, it's unexpected. It could be um, expectations, right? It could be yes. unmet expectations. So like I say to the guys in my group, right? Um, it's not about being perfect. It's about progress, right? So, you know, when we're hitting our 90-day 90 90 day targets, when we're working through that, if you only get, let's say, like in, in uh, self, right? You're working on self. So maybe at the moment, what's my goal in self? My goal in self at the moment is to write, to write my book, right? Yes. Um, I'm dyslexic. I can't spell very well. I'm dyslexic. My grammar's terrible. So for me at the moment, it's just to write 200 words a, a week right? So break that yeah. down, 40 words a day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if I don't hit and get like 100 points over the next three months, because we use a point system, right? Okay. If I don't hit 100 points over the three months with that, and I hit 60 or 70, I'm not going to beat myself up about that, because that's still progress, right? But yes. what I am going to do is I'm going to look at it and say, okay, what could I have done better? Maybe I could have done this. Maybe I could have done that. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to look at it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not going to say, man, I've only got 70%. That's not good enough. I'm going to examine it, look at it, and say, okay, I got 70%. That was good. What could I have done better, right? Yes. And it's like with my son. When he does something, that was good, right? What can we do better next time? Yes. How, to, how can we go a little bit further, right? So, you know, I, I think, you know, is everything you're going to do, you're going to be the best in? I, I don't know. I don't, not. maybe not, maybe not. No, <laughs> but you know, yeah. but it's about, if you're making progress and 1% better each day and moving forward, Yes. I, you know, 
I, I'll share this because I, I think this is important. And, and this was a realization that I had is like a lot of people get caught up in this. But what is the meaning and purpose of life? What's the purpose of life? And I had a guy at my retreat and he, he kept on saying it. My, I, I have a men's men's group, like a, a four day intensive. Um, I call it man camp. Right. And um, and he's there and he's, he's like, my purpose. Of, what's the purpose of it all? What's the purpose of life? And I'm, I'm like, man, like. I can tell you that, right? And he's like, oh, what, what is it? What is it? Like, I'm going to give him some kind of spiritual enlightenment. And I said, the purpose in, gro- in life is to expand and grow as a man. Like, yes. to just move forward, to get yes. better, right? To be a better father, better husband, a better man, to progress in every area of your life. That's, that's what everyone wants. If you're not growing, then you're just shrinking and dying, right? So it's just moving forward and, and enjoying that process it's not about no destination it's like who you become on the journey yes I'm just like, oh, i never thought of it like that before i was like wow oh, it's ten thousand pound please because i've just there solved one of <laughs> one of your one of your biggest problems <laughs> yes no. hmm. so where can people find you websites like uh just yeah about- so people can find me on go on, man yep go for it uh, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on my Facebook page. Is um, I am Michael Hilton. That's M I C H E A L H I L T O N. My name Michael spelled different. Um, you might put, and, it, um, put it in the comment section there. Just type it out so people can yeah, just find man. it. Yeah, I'll put my website in there. Yeah. www. Yeah, people could go on there and and find um, find that or uh, there you go. Or um, I am Michael Hilton on on, the, uh, on my Facebook page. That's where I'm most active on here, my stories, and on my okay. Facebook page, man. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I'll, mm. I'm going to edit this out and I'll put it on the core conversations on Facebook. I, I know you're following, and uh, I gave you that shout out. So you'll see it there. So people are going to be reaching out to you, asking you some questions, man. This is a great conversation today, and I thank I really you, man. Hope, hope that men are and women are inspired by it to just have permission to to try their best and to you know just chase after that and to have fun too, man. You had some great points in today. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Man. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate you asking me to come on, man. Absolutely. man. I look forward to your podcast. Oh yeah. Um, mm. Men on form is a podcast guy. So definitely follow that subscribe as well. Thank you so much for joining us today on core conversations. This organic platform has been made possible by amazing people like yourself. So if you're a Pilates instructor or a movement specialist of some kind, and you want to be a guest, please message me. If you're in some other field and you know the messages just resonate with you, message me. I'd love to have you on. All of our messages connect, and for some reason, they all help us in this battle. We're all in this game together, so I'd love to hear from you. Let your words be life to someone else. Check out our website, personalvictory.ca. Click the Core Conversations page to see who our upcoming guests are, and I will see you next time on Core Conversations.